So I'd like to welcome participants to the hybrid planning board meeting of November 28th. A call to order on Ms. Creighton. Here. Ms. Felicio. <coughs> Ms. Foley. Here. Mr. Only. Here. Ms. Tenney. Here. Um, I'd like to announce that I received an email with a uh, letter of resignation attached from uh, Gary Gilbert, affected, effective 11-22. So he'll no longer be part of the board. Thank you. Looks like we have a quorum tonight. I'd like to remind all board members, guests asked to be recognized by the chair if they wish to speak, and this meeting is being recorded. First item on the agenda is acknowledge receipt of correspondence. I've got four listed, a uh, letter from <clears throat> Lorraine Iavoni, 1119, Town of Wenham, three letters, dated 1110, Essex appeal decision, <clears throat> and an Ottinger letter dated 119. At this time, I'll allow public comments on items not on the agenda with a limited time. Does anyone from the public like to speak? Okay, first item on the agenda is 7 Bet Bennett Street, 4 Tanglewood Road, a and um, Is the applicant here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Would you just um, introduce yourself and uh, your address and or your Kurt's department, 7 Bennett Street? Mm -hmm. My name is Joe Small. I'm from Hancock Survey. I prepared the plan. Okay. on this plan is a small creation of a non-buildable lot coming off a much far, larger parcel uh, that's part of Fort Tanglewood Road and that is going to be conveyed to the abutter of the specific um, What this plan represents in orange is the outline of the existing lot as it is now and what I'm going to present to you with the yellow parcel being created and this is what the configuration loss will look like after the conveyance is made. So this piece is going to the dividing lot and that will be the final configuration. Okay. Um, that's it. No no new legal building lots are being created. No frontage is being affected. The area of the remaining lot is still well within zoning uh, requirements. That's pretty much it. Are there any easements on that uh, the proposed attached lot? It's not an easement per se, but there's something called the building restriction area. And that is going to be, that is, uh, the lot is subject to that, as was the lot before it. And that's simply a restriction that no structure should be built within that area. No other utility uh, issues? Nothing that I've seen. Okay, um, any questions from the board? I'll uh, take a hand. Can you tell me what the square footage is? Yes. I need my glasses for this, though. <laughs> 928 square feet. Okay. What is the current condition of the land that's being transferred? It's undeveloped right now, isn't it? There's yeah. nothing on the line. It, it's, it's kind of a side hill, and it's mm -hmm. very ledgy. And um, all we're going to do is actually put some natural plantings in there could kind of buffer us from the sounds of Pine Street and everything. Mm -hmm. So we're just mm -hmm. putting, put, we've already got a, a preliminary plan in with uh, Jeffrey's Creek to uh, put some plantings in there. So that's all we're so doing. So it's a sloped, just a natural Yeah, slope. it's a slo it slopes up the hill. Okay. <clears throat> There's a lot of rock and ledge and we're just going to plant in between. I have a question. Betsy, have you looked at the plan? Do you have any recommendation? I looked at the plan. It's a classic a and &R. It doesn't affect um, the frontage or access of either of the lots. It's basically a conveyance of under 1,000 square feet. Uh, it's kind of classic. So I think it meets the requirements of approval not required. I just have a question and a curiosity, <clears throat> which has got no bearing in this case at all, but this is a very strange shaped lot. I'm wondering if, <laughs> if anyone knows why this happened. 
Oh, the, the one on top? top? It, it was created in 1979, so I have no idea what went on down there. It was a <laughs> redivision of, of a few lots down here at the time, because it was an earlier subdivision. How they came up with it, who knows? Yeah, I, I, I've seen some of the earlier plans when we purchased our home. Yeah. I think when they did the whole Tanglewood Circle, they tried to make lots, and this one was in kind of a funky spot, so they, in order to get the square footage, they made this <laughs> accentuated pork chop, I guess. So. <laughs> I mean, my guess in that vintage that there wasn't a requirement that, that limited the amount that you could neck down. It's a very odd-shaped piece of land, but it's to get the lot area. So... And Bob, who lives up there, never comes down there anyways because it's down over the hill and it's through the prickle bushes and everything. So he can. So you're the owner of the blue? Yes. All right. So have you been in front of the board for some parking or garage? Or is that one of your neighbors? No. That's no. Not us. Okay. I think that was next door. Okay. That's next okay. to the gas station. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just making sure if that was. So I moved to approve the. Uh, um, uh, plea will not require reflected on the uh, uh, prepared uh, reflect on the plan of land. No, uh, endorse the uh, approval not required with the number as Betsy's going to provide us on the plan of land prepared by Hancock Associates for Kurt Stro <coughs> Stropka. Spataka. It's not an easy one. <laughs> Spataka. Spataka. Uh, dated um, 10 28 22. Scale one inch equals twenty feet. There a second. I'll second it. Further uh, discussion. Uh, well, uh, we need a. Do you have an A and R number, Gail, or? Gail, is there an A and R number? Uh, can you unmute yourself? Do you have it? Uh, no, but I have the book, and I will look it up tomorrow. Roll call vote. Mr. Alicia? Do you mind starting it the other way? I wasn't here in the beginning, so I want to abstain. I don't think there's going to be an issue, but I mean, I just feel like I missed the beginning. I should have done it. Yes. 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 The chair votes yes, so it's five, one, and one abstention. For no other reason. No, five, for my apologies. Five, five and right. one abstention. Do you sign the plane tonight, or do I come back for it after it's signed? Um, I usually, is there a mylar? I usually sign a mylar. We had submitted a mylar. Um, I usually sign that, and then I sign, uh, we get a stamp on it and uh, sign that. Um. I believe the mylar is downstairs in the assessor's office in Gail's area, so. So that brings up a good point. Now that we're meeting back in person, uh, it used to be I had signatory rights as one person to sign for the whole board. Now um, now that we're back meeting together, I'm wondering if all members have to sign the document. As long as you have signatory rights and it's voted and it's on record at the Registry of Deeds, you're good. Um, okay. Some boards don't like to do that and they like to get a majority signing, so it's up to you. Well, I'll leave the bylaw and um, how many copy scale do I need to sign? Usually three or four. Probably um, three or four. Um, I don't. I don't have a key to down the stairs. So. so. I think Ron, if you at least sign it this time, I think we should not have any issues with that. I think it's just a logistics issue. And. Okay, I'll get the mylar. I'll sign it, um, and um, <coughs> I'll leave it in town hall. And then the other copies, I'll uh, I'll sign. Also, I'll come down uh, once. Tomorrow. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah. So in the future. Are you on there? Right? Go ahead. Try in, in the future, um, if we have a mylar, I'll bring it to the meeting. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Great, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So I, I thought this might happen. Um, we have 15 minutes before I can call the public hearings. Uh, so I, I, I move to take something out of order. Uh, uh, and some
something that would take about 15 minutes. And uh, I think maybe this uh, 40A discussion, since it's pretty simple. Is it? <laughs> yeah. So my understanding is on this 40A is that the town has to fill out an action plan form that the state wants by the end of January. As we get to become familiar with the proposed section of the 40A and fill out the form on behalf of the town. I understand the form is fairly straightforward. It lists basic tasks we need to complete by December 2024. We need to show a timeline that has us completing the various tasks. We have two years to decide if we're going to enact the new zoning that would bring us into compliance with the law. Submitting the form does not commit the town to coming into compliance. It commits us to pursuing the possibility of coming into compliance. And I'll just ask Betsy to give us uh, some more information. Um, so I've been working to get up to speed on this. I sat in on a webinar last week, mm -hmm. and one of the questions I asked um, was, given the train station is in Phil Tideland area um, and is noted on the municipal vulnerability study as being not a great place, uh, you know, by 2100, it may be underwater or portions of it may be underwater. And it sounded like the state was open to a little more flexibility in terms of that type of density in the downtown. Um, and made the comment to me that um, some of at least 40 or 50 percent of the land area could be outside of the mile distance yeah. from the train station. Half mile. Half mile. No, well, they, maybe. they specified to me in a mile. So, um, and I know at one point there was discussion about a half mile. So, um, my understanding is that you try to get something as close in as you can within the half mile radius, but after that, um, there seemed to be some flexibility in terms of being able to be outside of the area. So, um, it's... A, the issue of density and 15 units an acre, I think if you cherry picked through the center of town, there are some buildings that are easily that density. Um, so um, I guess my stance on it is that I think there could be a number of properties on, for example, the other side of 128 that might um, support that type of density and it wouldn't be seen on a regular basis because everybody's used to single family houses in town um, on sometimes on larger lots, sometimes on modest lots. But I think it's doable to have a couple of areas closer in and then try to take the majority of um, the requested housing and put it outside of, of the mile radius. Um, so that was one webinar. Um, I've been looking into it a little bit more. Um, and I think given the fact that the, the, the really difficult part is by not adopting something like this, the town loses the opportunity for significant grant monies, including infrastructure grant money. So that's obviously a decision that needs to be made by the town. Um, but I think two years is a, is a while to be able to put together this plan. Um, I think it's, it's not insurmountable. Um, but that's a decision that this board and a number of other boards would need to make. So we do need to back up 
the two years to get it before the town meeting. So it's not a full two years, I, I would believe. Correct. Um, yes. <coughs> we need the, the town it needs to submit an action plan mm -hmm. by January 31st of 23. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think this is Christine's agenda item, so if you want to speak, Christine. I No, I just think January 31st is coming up, and yeah. holidays are upon us, and we've kind of pushed this off, kicked this can, as we say many times. And I think there has to be a higher-level discussion, which no one has had. Do we want to do it? Is it yes or no? And I think just saying that we lose grant money isn't sufficient conversation. We need data. We need numbers. We need specific grants. We need where grant money we've received so we can make a decision. And I don't know if the decision is ours. Other communities are making the decision at town meeting, not to adopt the zoning, mm -hmm. but to actually go forward or not. So there's a lot of questions and conversations, in my opinion, that should be had. <laughs> we'll go around more. Um, in regards to what Betsy said about the form stating our potential to do the diligence to to investigate the plan, um, which we do have some time to do, it would be fiscally irresponsible to close down that opportunity right now for the um, grant monies that come along with it. This is a carrot and a stick approach that the state is taking, and we'll have a good dialogue about um, the pros and cons, and, the, and if there is some flexibility of meeting it. I, I know that you know, the state and towns are also thinking about climate change and resiliency to climate change, so obviously we want to put residential development and any kind of development over the longer term in the right place to be resilient to climate. But um, we should certainly, I think, uh, I think we have a responsibility to do that diligence and to, and to investigate how it could be met and, um, and to, to um, organize our collective thoughts about that. Thank you, Sarah. I agree we need to do our diligence, I th and I agree with Christina that this is probably not something that we decide alone. Um, Obviously, zoning changes, we don't decide, decide alone, and I think if we decided to go forward or not go forward, that seems to me we need to do some, a lot of work before that. Um, but I think Ron is proposing that, um, that we authorize Betsy and Greg to complete the action plan form, maybe uh, in advance of our next... Uh, meeting or the first, you know, with a meeting, we could we could just review it. Looks like it's a pretty simple form, and that's really what we need to do now. And I'm delighted if Betsy and Greg can uh, complete the form so that we don't close any doors and that we, and um, in the new year, take the steps needed to do the due diligence, understand uh, what this is. It seems like there are a couple pieces um, still in flux at the state level, so. Um, um, when the time is right, I'll make a motion to that effect. Thank you. Um, yeah. well, actually, I don't think that uh, we authorize anything at this point. Right. The town has to submit the form. Mm -hmm. Greg can turn to us and ask for advice, I guess, but he's the one who's going to fill it out and submit it. He's the only one authorizing the town to submit the form. Um, also, uh, one uh, thing I think we should be clear about is that uh, the, it's not that big a push to, to comply with this zoning requirement. Uh, right now, three unit houses are allowed in the downtown area by right, and four by special permit. If we just changed it from three units to four units by right, we would probably comply. That would be it. It would be just that simple. That may not be what we want to do, but it, it's not... They're not asking us to build high-rise apartments all over downtown. <clears throat> and we're very close to the density uh, allowed by zoning already, so I think we can be strategic about it, think about good sites where we would welcome denser development, but I don't think we have to jump through a, a hundred hoops here necessarily, unless we want to. Ms. So I would like to know what the town's um, plan is. It seems very haphazard at the moment. Um, I'd like to know who's filling out the form. I'd like to know who's gathering the financial data, who's doing the cost-benefit analysis, who's reviewing the compliance models, the Excel workbook, the two factors, 
There's municipal land maps that the state has posted on their website that has a basic land database file and a detailed land database file. Um, you know, if, if it's decided by whomever that we're going to do an interim compliance action plan, I would still like to know what the data is backing that up. Um, I mean, I, personally, I know we've gotten, we've received out of those three buckets of grant money, we've received 600000 over the past 12 years, 500000 for a dredging project, and 100000 to look into um, moving the wastewater treatment facility. So I think it's very important we weigh what potential grant money have we received, do we think we'll receive, do we want to receive, with... Um, allowing 37 acres of 15 units per acre by right. Um, the state does say that we can do 40% within the MBTA station, and thus 60% can be outside of that area. That could be an overlay, you know, five, six different overlays. So we have to get a sense of what residents want um, after they've seen the data, and I just haven't seen any data. I don't know who's spearheading this. I don't know if it's Betsy, but if she has that data, that would be great to pass along. I do not have that data. Along. I've been here three um, weeks. <laughs> I know. I tried to open up those <laughs> municipal land maps. You need certain software to do that. Perhaps you have it at being a um, town planner. Um, the Excel spreadsheets are very complex and very detail oriented. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I, it's a lot to do in a year, it's a lot to do in a year and a half. And, uh, you know, I've, I've um, seen what other towns have been doing and we've done nothing. We have had no public meetings, there's no public outreach, there's no data to be had. So I'd like to see that. Can I have a suggestion? Uh, can I just one second. Greg, do you have any comments on this? Uh, hi, Ron. Thank you. Um, so uh, a couple of thoughts. Obviously, there is a lot of data that still needs to be presented. Obviously, that's not all going to be presented by the end of, of January. I think the intent here is that um, if there's interest in, in analyzing what the options are, then we should proceed with filling out the form, which has been indicated is, is not all that complicated. It, it's, they spell out the, the primary tasks and you develop a timeline in which you're gonna accomplish those tasks. Um, I'm, I'm confident that if we decide that we wanna uh, pursue studying it, then we can collect that data and then have public forums and have public presentations of that data over the next 18 to 20 months. Um, you know, you could tar target the fall special meeting in 24 to take a final vote if, if it gets to that stage. Um, and, and, you know, in terms of the funding, um, Mary's correct in the past, uh, that 600,000 looking forward, um, that figure could climb easily north of 5 million. Um, a dredging project of 2.5 million for the next round and a 2.5 million dollar request for some infrastructure. Um, assistance as we look to um, improve our water and sewer system that allows the uh, CST project to go forward. Um, so just those two projects alone um, could easily net the town $5 million in additional revenues. Now, money shouldn't be the driving factor. This should be done um, in a way that makes sense for the growth of the community. Um, and, and we may conclude that at the end that it doesn't. Um, and we're just not in a position to make that decision yet. But it, I think it is prudent to go forward with analyzing the data and, and coming to a logical conclusion at the end of the 20 months that we have. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Kathy Bellotta, you have your hand up. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, just, I, I think it's important to be very clear on the next steps as everyone is, is discussing. And um, we, have, as, as a select board, we have not had this discussion yet on 40A. And um, Greg, I'll advocate now for putting it on the agenda for our next meeting. But um, what I would recommend is three, three steps here. 
Number one, understanding where do we already comply with the 40A requirements, the MBTA zoning, because it's not like we're starting from scratch. Okay, so number one, where do we already comply or how, how or how, to what extent do we already comply? Number two, what would it take to close the gap so that we could comply? Uh, as been suggested, there could be some minor changes to some zoning in the general district that perhaps on its own could allow us to comply. Whatever it is, what would it take to close the gap? That's number two. And in number three, um, in, in parallel to Mary's point, I think the select board and the, in concert with the finance committee should, should come up with a plan B for what happens if we can't comply. You know, where would we get the extra funding to support all of the, the lot, the funding we would lose if we did not comply? So, you know, in summary, step one, where do we already comply? Number two, what would it take to close the gap? And number three, let's have a plan B because ultimately any zoning changes have to go before town meeting and we always need a contingency plan. How do we fund what we need to fund in order to um, you know, uh, protect the town? So anyway, those are my thoughts and those are just my personal thoughts as I said because the zone, uh, this select board has not yet met and, and had this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, so um, just to move forward, um, I think the next step is to get that form done, um, and then maybe I don't know if we need to look at it, but um, we can have it, we can get it done for our next meeting. We'll just take a look at it. I don't know. Uh, okay. We need to bless it or not. I don't. I don't know. I would like to look at it. Okay. So why don't we uh, so, why don't we try to get that? So up? and I think the next step, what I was going to suggest, was almost similar to what Kathy was. Maybe we need to set up a subcommittee, and different people from different boards are gathering and relaying back. It just seems like we're not going to get a whole lot done as a board, and there is a lot of financial planning, you know, select board authority that we need to have collaborative meetings on. So Ron, maybe you can get with the chairs of the other boards. And, See if that's a good idea, and then maybe at the next meeting we can ask some people to represent. Okay. I mean, the maps and the money, and I mean, what land is left in the LCD? I mean, cell signaling is pretty much that's what I mean. This that's not an issue, really, I think, on the other side. All right, I'll, uh, I'll investigate that up. <clears throat> yeah, I think the first step is to fill out this action form so we don't close any doors, and then. Um, the other, the other question that I have is, I believe that MAPC does have technical assistance for helping towns to to do to gather some of this data. Um, it seems to me we should avail ourselves of some of those resources. And I do think that uh, since we have an interim planner, this is an important issue that she can take the steps to move this along create a work plan of the various things we need to do. Kathy outlined some of those <coughs> things. I think there are probably some others. Um, <clears throat> because I think there are several different outcomes that we might contemplate. There's, um, and, and I think it's the other thing I would caution us on all sides to not prejudge um, the, the outcomes until we've done the work. Um, so, uh, you, you know, right now all we're doing is not shutting any doors. Um, I think it would be irresponsible of us to not file the form um, and just close that door. So I, I, I would, uh, as I, I would support Ron's initial statement, which is Betsy and Craig uh, fill out the form and um, if you want to put, give it to us for you know input as a draft on the at our next meeting or at first meeting in January, as long as it's before the deadline. But it seems to me that it's a town. As town staff can fill out this form, and uh, there, it's it's simply a, a statement of commitment to do the work we have been talking about. So, could I just ask two questions on that? Yeah. That um, as I've seen other towns do, if if whomever or whichever board it's coming from, that there is a public outreach that even this interim form is being. Um, 
submitted on that behalf of Manchester. I know other towns that have asked their residents if they want to submit this form or not. So I think we're submitting it by somebody's directive. And, you know, so I think that's important for residents to know. And I would ask that for this project, we have a true project plan. Um, a true one. What does that mean? That means an actual project plan that you have, um, you know, all of the um, higher topics and the subtopics and timelines and tasks and deliverables and, you know, everything that's kind of spelled out so people know what needs to get done, what's getting done, when it needs to get done by, who's doing it. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, Becky Jakes. Hi, Ron. Thank you. Uh, Becky Jakes, 22 Forster Road and Select Board. Um, I just would like to remind um, some people, this is not a commitment. This is a placeholder. If we don't do this, then we have made a commitment to not pursue this. So this is simply a placeholder for the time being. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. I'm going to move on to the next topic. Um, I'd like to open the continued public hearing on special permit application for Crocker <coughs> Boat Yard. Um, this is on the floating dock section 7.5 and 4.1.10J. In order to hear comments from the Harbor Advising Committee on December 7th, we have been asked to continue the public hearing to our next meeting on December 12th at 7 p.m. So at this point, I would like to, uh, and we've received a uh, letter from the applicant requesting such. And that is a paper copy that's in front of you all. a paper copy uh, on your desk. It's uh, an email from Susan St. Pierre. Um, she says, good morning, Betsy. The Harbor Advisory Committee was unable to commit uh, comment on the two above reference projects. They won't meet again until De um, December. Um, as you know, our hearings got continued to November 28th. We'd like to request that continuation to be rescheduled to December after the Harbor Advisory Committee uh, meets and renders an opinion. And I advised her that the planning board's only meeting is in December 12th and needs schedule it with a draft decision for that meeting. Um, so she's asked for a continuance and um, she's been told that it's continued to the 12th. So do we need to vote the continuance? Um, I would vote, yes, I would vote to continue to okay. a time and date, sir. <clears throat> so I move, I move that we uh, continue the hearing Schedule for this evening to December 12th at 7 p.m. Second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? I have a question Laura for uh, Betsy. If there was to be a harbor master plan, I'll call it, developed, would that be under the jurisdiction of this harbor advisory committee? My understanding, and Mr. Fetterspiel can correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's that will be a movement afoot to start a harbor master plan. It will probably take several years. Mm -hmm. um, and as I understand it, that may be starting in the spring. Um, the harbor advisory committee does not want to be the lead on it. So I would assume that it would be somebody from applicable boards and commissions. Um, who would be assembling this harbor study committee. Okay. We don't have an existing older harbor master plan. We've never had a harbor master plan. I think that's knowledge. correct. Thank you. The okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Uh, vote to uh, move on the motion. Mr. Lisa. Yeah, we already did. Somebody, uh, Chris already made vote it. Vote to continue. Chris made it. And then I seconded. We're just voting. We're voting. Oh, voting, sorry. Oh. Yes. Ms. Delizio? Yes. 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 It's six zero. <clears throat> um, I'd like to open the continued public hearing <clears throat> on Manchester Marine floating dock <coughs> five and four point one point ten point J. 
And for the same reasons as it was just given for the previous one, um, we'd like to continue, I'd like to hear a motion to continue the uh, public hearing to our meeting December 12th at 7 p.m. So moved. No second. Any further discussion? May I ask a question? So if they're meeting on the 7th, are we going to get some <laughs> write-up or something that we're going to have before the 12th? So yes, Becky plans to go to the meeting. I what I had intended to do is to go to the meeting, and I have been working on decisions. So the goal would be for me to incorporate their comments into the decision and then get them out to the board <clears throat> on the 7th or 8th for the meeting on the 12th. And I don't know if that's enough time for everybody. Um, I could get you a draft decision except for their comments um, earlier than that. So every board's different. I mean, I've had boards that basically just give me the stuff on Friday and we'll look at it on Monday. But to, every board's different. So I need to know what your time frames are. I guess, how are you writing a decision if you don't know how we're feeling about it? Yeah, I guess that was my question, too, is how, how is it going into a decision before? Because I think we're just looking for their input, correct? Right. I mean, I can do a write-up of what their input is, or Brian can do a write-up of what their input is, or the chairman can do a write-up. I mean... I hate to add work to anybody, but I think it makes sense to kind of at least get a paragraph of what direction they're thinking, right? Right. So the notes from the Harbor Advisor Committee are probably more germane than the draft decision, right? Which the decision would be just a sort of outline, a formatting outline, not knowing yet how the board is gonna, how the board will decide, is that right? So. I think we need to see so I'm going to be attending that meeting. I can yeah. certainly send everybody an email saying this is what happened at the meeting. Yeah, that would work, I think. The seventh. So that's a Wednesday and then a Monday. And actually, it's very helpful to have the uh, draft of the permit, special permit, mm -hmm. in hand before because it gives us a sense of what the issues are. We can vote to not issue it or to add conditions or change them. Or, mm -hmm. So I think it's helpful to have it in advance. I think on the field, it was absolutely, I think, or I'm not going to speak for anyone, but I'm feeling that we know that we need fields in town. It's voted on. It was in the, you know, we voted to allocate money in town meeting. I think that to me seems like we would potentially approve or change with modifications, but I mean, just a Marine and these two are. I don't know, but it's not the same rubber stamp, in my opinion. To assume that we're going to approve it, to me, is So this a is a little reach. bit out of our um, wheelhouse, this uh, harbor uh, floating docks business. We're not experts at, at this, this type of land use. Um, we have an endorsement by the harbor master on this. I think we're just waiting. I think you can write a draft decision, uh, Betsy, um, ahead of this, and then we can put in any conditions or it concerns the advisory committee has. Mm -hmm. My thought. Mm -hmm. I have one um, question that I'm, I would like. I'm not going to be able to go to that meeting, but I'd be curious uh, input from the Harbor Advisory Committee on public benefit that we should request from the applicants. I think that in the Manchester Marine case, the case of the pump out station remaining is an is a logical uh, public benefit that um, we could make part of a condition. But I'd be curious on the Crocker's um, boatyard. And I, I thought I would um, make some suggestions maybe through Bion that the committee, um, I mean, things like, uh, the high school sailing team could store their, I mean, this is making us up, but, you know, the, the harbor advisory committee could store their coach boats there during sailing season before the boat docks are all in the water as a public benefit, you know, because this is encroaching quite, you know, I guess we shouldn't put, but anyway, my I guess my 
without discussing the merits of the project, my, my question to you is could you ask the Harbor Advising Committee to think about the public benefit piece of the special permit? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just a, a clarifying question after Christine's and a following on Sarah's asking Harbor Advisor Recommittee. I'd also be interested if they have any, um, as a Harbor Advisory Committee, is the environmental impact of this positive or negative? Is that part of their review or, you know, do they have any comment on that? I think the CONCOM did weigh in on the CONCOM so has weighed in on the kind of title flats mm -hmm. area, but um, I don't know whether the Harbor Committee also has has notes. And then what I was going to say on coming on Christina was that I just want clarity that the drafting of a decision doesn't imply a yes or no. Is that correct? Because I agree there's a lot of discussion to be had around this. We don't know which way it's going yet. But a drafting of the decision, as I'm understanding it, is you're kind of putting the issues and the facts of the case out there, but mm -hmm. leaving the actual discussion, the decision yet to be had. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if, if that's the case, then I think drafting a decision without any preconditioning of which way it might go would be helpful just as kind of collecting the facts in front of us. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And then one final thing. The Harbor Advisory Committee, is my understanding, is three people, correct? And Brendan Crocker is one of the three? No, I think there was Chip. five Skip. when I was there. Oh, Skip. So, but Skip is... I think there's one of the applicants on the Harbor Committee. Yeah, but he recused. He's okay. Recusing okay. Himself. Thank you. Okay. He's, uh, He's a relatively new member. Okay. He's recusing himself. Thank you. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. So it's down to two. I think there's five. I think there's five. They just reconstituted it. Okay. Okay. Did we vote to continue? No, this? we did not yet. Okay, uh, to, to uh, continue the motion debated and seconded, we've had discussion and now just to vote to continue. Yes. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Okay, thank you. All right, now to the meet of the meeting. At this time, I'd like to open a public hearing on a special permit application for a site plan approval for Manchester Department Parks and Rec. This is a continuation of a meeting that we had um, last time, and this is to consider um, parking, uh, 25 parking spaces on for a, on a construction of a youth athletic field on the site of the old burn dump at 156 to 160 Pine Street. So um, subsequent to our um, so do I need to vote to open the public hearing? No, you just open it. Just open the public hearing. You don't need to vote. vote. Yes, I'll be sure. So um, since our last meeting, we've received updated plans from the DPW. They were in your packets. Um, and at this point, I would like to open this up to DPW. Uh, Nate, are you going to speak? Uh, yeah, okay, Nate. Uh, Nate and representing the town. Yeah, so I guess since the last time uh, we provided some documentation on the uh, crossings and sight lines, uh, we also provided uh, documentation. Um, so I'm sorry, let me just bring it up. Um, we reduced caliper size on the trees. Uh, we added some of the mixed plantings. Um, that they have requested uh, along the back south side of the project. Um, I guess there are there any specific questions that you're looking for tonight? Um, I had a comment on the, um, uh, driving home from uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, I got off the highway and uh, you know just noticed that um, when you're heading back into town from the uh, Pine Street exit, that you don't see the speed limit 25 miles an hour sign until after you're past the proposed driveway entrance. So I'm wondering what the speed limit is. Uh, is it what the speed limit is coming off the exit ramp to just to the driveway? Um, do we know what that is? And uh, 
It is a 25 zone. There is a uh, 25 mile an hour speed limit right off of, I guess it's more aligned with the northbound uh, on ramp. It's kind of tucked away. It's a little hard to see sometimes, um, but I did look at that actually on my way home today. I checked that. Um, and it's there. So it's 25. There is a sign ahead of the driveway heading south because I didn't see one. Yeah, it's like right at uh, the northbound on-ramp. So when you get off, if you're coming uh, northbound, if you get off at, on, at Pine Street, it is uh, like right next to the telephone poles there. Okay. It's kind of tucked away, and I think, is it a Tree City sign mm -hmm. that that's been. also there? Okay, so I missed it. Okay. All right, any other specific questions on uh, Laura Tenney? Hi, Nate. Um, I just had a question on the most recent plans and uh, appreciate the updates that were made to um, put in a sloped walk rather than a handicap ramp because the access, the pedestrian access is much improved as well as the yep. uh, maintenance of that area and um, appreciate the, the greater diversity of native um, trees and plantings around mm -hmm. the site. I think that will um, make it look less like a giant green wall behind it, but a, a more natural um, woodland edge. So I think those are good improvements. I did wonder about the um, alignment of the fence, and we don't have a plan right here, but the fence is sort of, um, it doesn't it doesn't wrap all four sides, if I'm looking at it correctly on the plan, and so the side facing the parking lot is unfenced, and I am wondering about whether some separation between kind of family gathering and watching area from the play zone and um, also protecting parked cars from balls rolling off the field would be um, improved by wrapping the fence around the fourth side of that and having more. I see I see a detail in the um, chain link fence for a gate, but I don't see where the gate goes because it looks like a rather large opening face in the parking lot. Yeah, the gate is on the uh, west side of the property. Okay. Um, along that back edge um and then we do the the fence does wrap around and covers kind of i guess the the end of the parking lot but i do agree that it doesn't you know cover as you're going towards the walkway right <clears throat> um I, I guess our thought there was to kind of open it up you know kind of given it is smaller you know younger kids that you know the ball velocities, distances aren't going to be quite that long to reach, you know, the parking lot, um, you know, from those, you know, from where the, the more the playing field is and then the area that's kind of more open just off of the parking lot was going to be kind of the, the staging area um, and where everyone can kind of mill around while they're waiting for the next, the next games or practices. Well, I couldn't tell was from the plans where the field striping occurred, so it was hard to tell how much run out area there was between the field and the fence. So, I, so you may be right that there's a long way for the ball to travel, but I do think not having a barrier, a fence in between the parked cars and the playing field may mean that little kids are kicking the ball out, running the ball towards the parking lot, and those two things shouldn't mix. So that just wrapping the fence longer across the parking lot side of the plan might make sense to keep balls in. I don't think a six foot fence is necessary personally. I think that's going to feel a little too much like a cage. These are yep. little kids, they're not going to kick the ball that high. But a four foot fence just to block the ball travel um, and make an area that's clear for families to sit outside. There's really no place for families to sit and watch their kids. Uh, then that might be beneficial as well. Okay, yeah, we can bring it to Weston and Samson and get their thoughts. Um, I know the, the cover, you know, over that section does get a bit thin, so putting the fence in does, with the mow curb, um, that was a consideration, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay, let's see what they say about it. <clears throat> yep. Hi, Nate, just a couple quick questions. Um, there was an email going around, or there was an email in our folder about um, how the number of parking spaces came about. Um, and I'm just, I'm trying to get clarity on that because that email seemed to target how many kids per team when there's a game, seven versus seven, such, such and such. 
my understanding was this was a practice field. So I just want to ensure that we're not comparing apples and oranges of how many parking spaces we need for a practice field. And has there been outreach to the, I'm assuming it's just soccer coaches, how many um, kids are on a practice for a soccer coach, thus how many cars? Uh, so I think, it, I mean, it is going to be a game field for the smaller. It's going to be very similar in use to Masco, you know, so it is game space for the younger kids. Um, and I think it's all, you know, kind of predicated on, you know, assuming that there's three people, um, you know, per car uh, and we have 25 spaces. So that would be in theory 75 people um, and just maximizing what we had available for, uh, you know, our, our area that we could maximize the field space and then the parking as well. Okay, yeah, I just want to, I, I know in the past in different situations, it's, you know, the town has kind of used what we have because that's what we have. And I, I just want to be clear if that's kind of what's happening here is if this is where we have the space, so we're going to make it work. Or if this is really the amount of parking that we would have if we truly had enough space. Would we just go with the 25 spots? I mean, I think if we had uh, unlimited space, we would go with a normal size field and parking to accommodate, but we are, you know, per the Parks and Rec master plan, um, you know, we have very limited locations that we can do athletic fields in town um, and making use of, of this, uh, you know, site was, uh, I think, the, the size of the field was laid out in the Parks and Rec master plan. So that's, you know, how we determined uh, the size of this field and the amount of parking that we could get in. Okay. So, I, I mean, I think we have to go with the assumption, assumption with safety that there will be overflow parking, I think, discussed at the site visit on Pine Street or Moses Hill, correct? Yeah, that, that's where, uh, well, on Pine Street, I don't think we're going to have parking on Moses Hill. Okay. For previous discussions. Okay. And then this was just on our desk when we came in. There was There's a, an email, um, and it was saying something if, if, that the, the DPW doesn't want someone to infer that the general sidewalk improvement, so I'm assuming that's the extension of the sidewalk out there. So if funds was used for that, then we need we might need funds for the sidewalk improvement. Is that what I'm getting from this email? Which for the southbound sidewalk improvement. So the northbound is within the project budget that has been allocated uh, for this field. Um, but within that initial budget, the southbound sidewalk was not considered. So that was an ask, um, you know, it's quite lengthy. It's about 650 feet, I believe. Um, you know, so that's going to be a fairly significant cost. So I guess what I was in, intending with that comment is that the the funds would have to be allocated specifically for that sidewalk and not come from the DPW, you know, general sidewalk maintenance line item. Because that's, you know, we have a much broader scope with, you know, for that line item, I, I line item addressing sidewalks all over town versus just this one sidewalk that's project, somewhat project specific. Sure. Okay. Do you have a, like a, do you have a cost in, do you know what that is, the 650 feet? Say that again, sorry. Do you, do you know what the cost of that is, or that might not be relevant to this? But... I don't have a cost off, off, offhand. No. Thank you. So Nate was responding to, I had written a draft decision, which I've given a paper copy to everybody. And originally, um, I thought this was going to be continued, which it still may might, might be. Um, so, but I, I just wanted to give an example of what a decision, a draft decision might look like. And so I gave it to Nate to review and his comments are in response to the draft, a draft decision.
Any other comments from the board? I do, actually. So I guess what I'm trying to get an understanding on is how many parking spots should this site have? Are we deficient? So the zoning basically says um, three, three people per vehicle. So um, the note from Nate or the engineer said that they're... The parking spaces were based on two people per car. That's what the email said. Well, the, z the zoning basically has language in there. Wait a minute, hang on. Um, Can you tell me what you're looking at? I guess the decision. Um, it is. Let me No, I just meant where the zoning. Um, the parking specifies club or recreational activities. Each three persons reasonably expected to be using a facility during a period of full utilization. One space is required. Where are you seeing it? So in our bylaws. It's on page 25 of the zoning. It's a recreational act, club or other recreational activity. Is there a, a section number? Pardon? Uh, 6.2.2. Thank you. Which is not what we've been presented with, right? The email says two people per car. Oh, I didn't see that. That was my first concern. I just would like to get a handle on how well, that, that, efficient. That, that is what's, that's what the design intent was behind. Assuming two people per car, and if the zoning is saying it's three people per space can be accommodated, that means 75 piece, people could be accommodated at the field, um, but if we have 77 teams, that would have approximately 10 to 15 people per team. So you can assume that if there's two people per car, you know, you're basically at, you know, 10 to 15 spots. You need 30 spots. If, you have if there's two people per car and then there's 30 people total, that would be... That's for a practice. We're saying they're going to have games. Yeah, but it's 7v7. Because it's a smaller field. So if it's 7v7 and then each team has approximately 10 to 15 people per team, uh, we could say 13 people per team is an average. I guess this is the information that I was looking for for today. Like, what are we making these assumptions on? What's the norm? Are we deficient? Like, just so we can be educated in what we're making. That was my first. I don't see anything about the sight lines. Did I miss? That was number two. And I think the beacons that we have are the same thing that is at Lincoln and school. Is that correct? Uh, those are different. Those are different beacons than what is uh, we have at Lincoln and school. But those are RFFBs. Okay. Um, so I guess let's so that, go back to the parking. I guess I don't see any kind of analysis what this should be, what we're deficient, just so we have an idea of what the on-street overflow is going to be. Um, I guess that's my I mean, that's, that's what our consulting engineer provided us. I mean, that, so, that was his analysis. So if you have 26 kids on a field, um, then... And you have a parent bringing the child in, so there's another 26. That's 52 people, and the parking is set up for up to 75 people. Well, no, you're just assuming three people per car. Like yeah. that's they're saying two people a car, so it's set up for two 50. People. Right. 50 to 75, depending on whether you use the zoning or the traffic engineer's requirements. The traffic engineer is saying. For seven on seven, at this size field with this 
population, they're assuming 15 spaces. We're doing 25. I think that the, we're going to put in a field. We're going to put in adequate parking that's determined by the traffic engineer and as fits the site. And we're not going to not put in a field because we want 30 spaces, but we can only fit 25. I mean, we're always going to have constraints, spatial constraints on any development we do. And the answer isn't always more surface parking. So I think we, you know, if the traffic engineer is saying we've demonstrated adequate parking, then we should make a decision based on those parameters. So that is true, but I'm saying maybe there should be something and it may be not in the decision, but maybe games need to be staggered a little bit so it gives people time to leave and <laughs> people to come so there's not a congestion. I'm, I'm just thinking I don't want schools or Pine Street to be, you know, burdened by this field because it's up to me. I did not read anything about the sight line. So adding vehicles and <clears throat> a limited sight line site, I'm just concerned about the kids and the safety. Um, did you see anything with sight lines? There, there was a plan that Nate submitted that, um, or an email that he submitted about sight lines. And um, I think the uh, maximum, on one side it was 500 feet, and on the other side it was like 300 feet. Is that right, Nate? I didn't see that email. Uh, let me just pull, yeah. So assuming an 85 uh, percentile operating speed of 35 miles an hour, the stopping site distance required would be 250 feet. Um, it's 25 so miles an hour there. Yeah, correct. correct. And so we assumed worst case scenario that, you know, as everyone has seemed to express that, you know, people are traveling faster than the uh, speed limit. So we assume those those higher speeds, uh, you know, just to kind of look at it that way. Uh, and so we have, uh, let me just pull it up here. Um, We do have that 250 to 300 feet in all directions. Uh, the one that was kind of hindered, uh, and that's the crosswalk. Uh, the one that was kind of hindered was the inbound sight line to the driveway exit, um, which I think was partially obscured when we were looking at it uh, by brush that could be cut back on the side. Uh, but there are other, or traffic engineers, other comment was that, you know, by putting in these in the activated beacons, the RFFB, um, we are satisfying the requirements um, even if we didn't have those sight lines. I guess me satisfying requirements is different than I don't, I would like some more information. It's children's safety is going to be based on our decision. So I was there, I was concerned about myself park, crossing the street. So I, this is just some email back and forth between you and the engineer. If this was a regular project, we would ask for peer review. So I guess that's the, just the basic information that I'm looking for from an engineer saying, this is where we're deficient. This is where we're making improvements. Just a formal report, not just email correspondence back and forth. And I guess my final concern with the beacon is the um, reliance on solar. So... Uh you know, I think we need to take some consideration that this was done by a professional engineering company. We're not engineers here to decide on a beacon. Uh, if the engineers decided on what type of beacon and they seem that safe, why would we why would we question it? Because the one at the corner, in me, it doesn't work because it relies on solar. It doesn't work any. It's out of commission well, eighty percent of the time. That's a maintenance issue. I don't think that's so. A, my cons question is can we make it powered permanently don't really on solar can it be live bed that's my concern the one on the corner is always out of commission it's always blinking or when you need <clears> to <throat> blink it doesn't blink so I would like something a little more reliable I, I don't know if it's only powered by solar but it's a concern of mine Nate is it only powered by solar Just looking at that, I believe this, the two ones I sent out are only powered by solar. I was just looking for the, the run times because when I saw them, they were pretty substantial. Um,
Do we have the engineers? Report? Yeah, so even if we had, so I think they've come a long way. I, I will admit that the one that is installed at Lincoln isn't very, isn't very reliable. Um, that was an earlier model that we did, I think, close to five years ago. Um, so they have made improvements. Um, looking at the uh, data sheets from the ones that I sent over, um, you know, if we assume, we'll even call it 300 activations a day, uh, their rated autonomy is 25 days for northern uh, latitudes. And so they have a breakdown. Uh, it's the very last page of the TAPCO um, submittal. Uh, everything from 100 activations to a day to 1,000. Uh, at 1,000 activations a day, you get uh, 12 days of autonomy. Uh, so meaning it, you know, it should last, the battery should last for 12 days without any charging. So then out of curiosity, what, what are the stats for the Lincoln Street one that, I mean, driving past it, it can just be flashing all the time and nobody in sight. So if it's on a constant flash, how does that work with the solar? I don't have that information in front of me. Okay. When we went out for the site visit, we were looking at a condition that was unimproved, so no crosswalk, no signage, no driveway. We were just going across Pine Street. And um, if we need the traffic engineer's information in a report, I think that's an acceptable request. Beyond that, I think we should take Nate's expertise on the traffic beacon and the other technical details of the project and let them proceed. I think we should stop sweating the small stuff, assuming that our, that our DPW is professional, competent, and intelligent, and I think they are. So I would pass a motion, propose a motion that we um, move this for a vote and endorse it. Well, just I'm really not trying to play devil's advocate, but I live with the one at the corner of Lincoln School, and it doesn't work. So mm -hmm. same organization put that in, and it doesn't really work. So I... I think they're saying that's old technology, and they're using that they've got a a professional engineer that they've hired and that they're going to get the best available technology. I don't I don't at all downplay pedestrian safety. It's something that we all care deeply about. Um, and I think if we've made our comments on the overall plan, that we can provide comments to the DPW that says, you know, please ensure that the traffic beacon is reliable and that you're confident in its performance. And then we should move on because we have other fish to fry tonight. And I think we've got a good overall plan. Okay. Um, before that, uh, Catherine Bellotta, you have your hand up. You have a comment? Yeah, just briefly, um, I was a little bit confused by some of the conversation. Um, uh, I, I'm following what Laura is saying, and I would advocate, uh, you know, supporting her position because anything, it's my understanding, anything to do with uh, traffic calming measures, crosswalks, uh, pedestrian safety is really under the purview of the select board. So what I would suggest is that any concerns regarding those items are sent from the planning board to the select board, and we will ensure that the DPW follows through with those items. Thank you. So um, one other comment I, I was looking into today, um, you know, we could look at doing a safety zone, which would reduce the uh, speed limit in that general area to 20 miles an hour. Um, so I don't, you know, looking through and trying to reduce the overall speed limit through that section, um, I think would be difficult because the 85th uh, percentile, but I think we could look at going the route of a safety, of a safety zone, um, which I'm sure, you know, people have seen, you know, in other locations, you know, around parks, fields, um, you know, generally where there's vulnerable users, um, I believe is the, the term they use. So that is one avenue we could also look at doing. I think Belay, you have your hand up from again? Or? Um, yeah, just um, so I, I appreciate the DPW's position. I think those are all, all suggestions are welcome. My point is that 
that discussion belongs at a select board meeting. And um, if you need any help getting that on the agenda, just, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you. All right, to, well, to Laura's um, motion to um, move this um, special permit decision. Is there a second? No, I'll second it. So a motion's been made and seconded um, to um, approve the, the um, special permit as written. Any discussion? Hello, <laughs> <laughs> <Hold> Mary. <laughs> you have the floor. Okay. Um, my question, I guess, is to Patsy. Mm -hmm. So, we posted public hearing and posted the agenda with certain bylaws and sections. Yet, this decision is referencing different bylaws and sections. I don't think we can make a decision on items that have not been posted. But correct me if I'm wrong. It's 6910352G. But that's not what the decision is saying. 69103 what's 6927 um, so 10351 is um, groundwater supply. They cannot comply with the town's requirements. And so they're putting the stormwater from the parking lot out into the um, Pine Street. Um, we did not discuss that. <laughs> we did at a site meeting. But not a discussion at site meetings. <laughs> you can't. No, we so, did not discuss that. Seven point five is. Wait a minute. And I think you know I and somebody knows better than I, but I. Seven point five is basically the administrative section that deals with special permits. And but we have to post for that. The public hearing posting has to post that. Why does that have to post it? It's just the law. No, I don't think it is. It is. Well, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> These are you. So, I'm not a lawyer. But, so but six, we, but I thought we discussed the drainage on the parking lot. Are we talking about the drainage? Maybe um, you can address this. We did. We just, we just, you know, they were going to, it was adequate. The engineers approved it, and, they were gonna, and then the field stuff is, is, um, pervious. That the field is pervious. I'm not arguing any of the merits of what's oh, on here. Are you saying that there's just not, um, that the decision and what has, has been drafted posted. as a decision is not what was posted in the public hearing notice? I think that's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Thank okay. You. So and it's not posted what's in the... I, I don't know the answer to that. I didn't post it. So why don't we... But then my, but to follow through with that, it's not consistent throughout the document either. So um, you have 7.5 here, but then you reference... Um, well, I guess that's fine. 7.52... Well, 7.52 is listed up here because 7.52 is applicability. And it says uh, uh, 6692. Oh, Any new development, expansion, or change of use other than a single family or two residential, um, two family residents, which would, under the parking schedule of street parking regulations of 6.2, require 10 or more parking spaces. Regardless of the number of parking spaces on the existing premises shall be permitted only upon the issuance of a special permit by the planning board for site plan review. A special permit shall be granted only if the special permit granting authority finds it's consistent with the purposes outlined in 691. So I've referenced 7.5.2. So, so I've referenced 691, 692, 75, which is 
administrative section of special permits. So you've advertised for a site plan review special permit, in essence. Um, I, well, I think you We did. didn't. We never advertised for 7.5. But then you referenced 4.1.10, and I don't know why. Um, that could be a typo. We're... Um, Page. Page. page six. So I, you know, I. I uh, page six. We're on page six. Um, oh, I have different page six. So I have right above the decision. Okay. Um, <clears throat> page six. Okay, four one ten. I guess it's on seven in this packet. Okay, wait a minute. So four one ten. Um, it's not the current zoning anymore. Any of the following uses, if authorized by special permit of the zoning board of appeals or the planning board, as specified below, and um, I guess my overarching concern is that I I just don't know that we can make decisions on things that we didn't post for. But I will. I think the, I think the decision kind of gets a little more into the weeds of the permit of what's being requested um, or what's being granted, um, or what's not being granted. Um, I don't. I never saw the public hearing notice, so. So I just know how the ZBA works and, and how the planning board's been working, and we discuss what's been posted for the bylaws that have been posted. So I... I don't quite understand what you're saying. So when you see a ZBA posting and our planning board public hearing posting, it's posted in the paper, and it says per bylaw sure. of what, it, what they are, bylaws they are applying under. Mm -hmm. And we're bringing in a whole lot of others that weren't that's just, posted. That, but that's I mean, just our, that's just part of the decision. That's I I. Greg Greg, do you have a comment on this? Sure. I'm rather than waste everyone's time, that's a good point that she raises. But why don't we just double check with town council and she'll she'll review the the um, hearing notice with the decision and she and see if she feels that it is adequate. And if, if not, then we will be warned and, and go from there. We can also but, strike the um, section numbers in the decision. So do we need to continue the public hearing to, to uh, await town council's decision? Yeah. Is this a clerical issue? Yeah. yeah. If, can we decide on the substance of the matter okay. now and let the clerical matter be cleaned up? I don't think there, there is a so, time deadline to get this done by, so... Uh, the only thing is, you, you, you can make a decision. You can make a decision, you know, pending ratification by town council. If she feels that a, a new warning, a new public notice has to be um, put forth, then then you start over. But otherwise, if she feels that it's adequate, then then you're done. So why don't we make that amendment to the motion? Tentatively go forward with this decision uh, pending town council's uh, subject to town council's review and review approval of the hearing notice versus the decision notice. Yeah, and my only other thing is that this was posted about an hour and a half before the meeting, so I haven't really reviewed it, but. Um, well, I, I assume we can make some uh, corrections to the decision. Um, if others have read it, then I will hear what they say. We probably won't have enough votes. We're not going to vote for um, it. So it's a special permit, so of five members voting, four have to approve. Exactly. So um, given the concern with the legal issue and the fact people haven't read it and there's a couple more kind of tweaks that need to happen, perhaps it's more prudent to continue it to the 12th. I mean, have other members read it and feel confident? I'm reading it now. Oh. I didn't get it in the 
So, so quite frankly, I would have gotten this to you earlier, sure. but it was noted on the agenda as continuance. Yeah. So, um, in the future, what I would do is try to get it to you at least three or four days in right. advance. Right. Um, is that sufficient time, three or four days in advance? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think normally we've asked for like the Thursday before the meeting, like, and okay. the close of business. Thursday. Okay. So Thursday before the meeting. Okay. So let's let's move to continue this um, to December twelfth. <laughs> in the meantime, we'll get the town council opinion, and uh, we'll have time to read this uh, decision now that you have it. Um. So what I would do is suggest that you toss. Well, um, I, I'll be revising this decision. So um, you might look at it and give me some comments as to what you like about it, what you don't like about it. But I will be issuing a new decision um, probably the middle of next week. So what's well, the procedure, Betsy? I'm sorry. Was, yeah. Can I ask a quick clarifying question? Um, so we'll vote to dis yes. we'll You can vote to continue it we'll to, to a time and date certain. To uh, December 12th, 7 p.m. So the question is a procedural one. How would you, going forward, when we get a decision in our um, packet. packet, say Thursday before a Monday meeting, and we might have some comments um, on the decision, it's very helpful to get this in advance. How would you like our discussion? Comments. Would you like them by email before? So they can come the in by email before okay. or um, at the meeting. We basically just go through page by page, and if anybody has any issue, I, I prefer to do it at the meeting in public. Yeah, I yeah. think that yeah. makes okay. more sense. That. that was why I asked yeah. because yeah. you're giving us a chance to read it before. But so right. we'll bring our right. to the meeting. So if I give you a chance to read it before, and then you mark off what you don't like or what you know then we can change it at the meeting right. and go from there. Yeah. And can I ask one more question? We don't have to talk about it be labor right here, but um, there are the substantive comments, and then there are going to be things like typos and grammatical errors. Some grammatical errors are mean more than others. It would be great to find a way to offload the clerical administrative comments and really spend our time discussing the substantive comments. Well, so what I would suggest when you're reviewing the decision, if you want to, you know, check off the, I, I mean, I'm hoping there aren't any typos in this. It goes through spell check and whatever. Yeah. But um, we all write differently. Sure. Um, so if somebody has some grammatical issues or Scribner's issues, they can email me with those. But when we get into a meeting, we talk about the substantive yeah, issues. I, I agree with that. We'll just yeah. email the typos to you and you fix them up. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so actually, on a substantive question, let's see, this decision says um, a sight line of 300 feet. Did we actually, I don't think I heard that tonight, was Nate? I think it was a minimum of 300 feet. He said more was two something at one point, right? No, I, I recall getting... Some kind of email saying that it was more than 260 feet, but I will go back and check that email and correct it. I guess I don't feel like I've had that information, and like I said before, I'm going to reiterate: if this was another project, we would ask. So the Nate's of going to put everything into. He's going to ask Weskin and Sampson to put everything into a two or three pager, um, or else he's going to put it into a two or three pager, and we'll get it to you next week. Thank you. Oh, that would be good. All right, Nate, Nate, you have a final thought. I want to move on. I just want to confirm you're referencing the correct posting because we did post it twice. What do you mean I think it'd be the October posting. I believe one was uh, September, late September, and then we reposted again in October uh, to correct uh, those paragraph. Um, I think there were only two. Um, Bylaw sections referenced in the uh, legal notice, and here we have several others, I think. So I don't think that's the issue. Okay. All right, so um, move to continue the meeting, the um, special permit for DPW to December 12th at 7 p.m. So moved. Uh, and for 
public discussion roll call. Do you need a second? Do you, need, do you have a second? I moved it. Oh, okay. Second. Oh, I think we see second. I'm sorry. We'll start around here, Mary. Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you, Nate. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. <clears throat> So, the next item. Oh, I have one general comment. We have that application folder. Betsy, have you seen it in SharePoint? So she doesn't have, she doesn't have access to SharePoint oh, yet. Yeah. Oh, I okay. have some issues with that. I will okay. talk to her and volunteer to help her when she gets access to show you how, to, how it's organized. Okay. And then, so we thought first, we did talk, she and I did talk about that and decided that we would first get her access. Okay. Second, be able to post things in the meetings, and then third, figure out how we duplicate those things into an application. It's just really hard I know. to find yes. things from meeting to meeting. So mm -hmm. each version of the plans are updated. They're in individual meeting folders versus one folder where we can follow the whole progression. Especially when I have a big one. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Okay, so can okay. I do anything to help? Um, no, she first has to get access. <laughs> Can you do that? <laughs> Can we do it? No, I. We. Uh, it has to be IT. We don't have. None of us have uh, administrator privileges to. I. So I have to talk with Mildred. I think it is. I don't know who the IT person. Is. Um, who's the IT person? You just need to. Because get initially, I got access to certain documents, but I didn't get access to any of the planning. So documents. I sent her a shared a, a link to the meeting folder and said. It means a special it. and, and she couldn't and she couldn't access it. So that's <coughs> the first step is just to be able to I think I thought you could I could share with anybody who had town email, but apparently not. So but we I agree with you on the application but, folder. Sure. No, um Gail could do it. Can we can we I think we're a learning curve all well, the way around. I was just suggesting we solve this offline and get to the next agenda item. Okay. So um, a couple of months ago, um, my Carla Russo came in and uh, gave us some Board of Health regulations. Um, at the time, the Planning Board decided to submit the regulations, uh, our comments, high level, to Gail. Uh, Gail received comments from five members. Um, they were in our packets. Um, there's a common theme on most of the comments. Uh, and I went through and checked off some of the ones that I thought were um, appropriate or, or a constant theme from the planning board. I would open, throw this open to other members for their thoughts. But first of all, has everyone read everyone's comments? Yes. Okay. Can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. I, I, we've been calling them Board of Health regulations, but I looked at the minutes of the Board of Health and haven't and did not see them uh, discussed there. So I think they are more. I could be wrong, but I believe that they are not necessarily coming from the Board of Health, but from some citizens who thought that they would be a good suggestion for the Board of Health. So perhaps we just pass these along to the actual Board of Health. And say when you get around to, if you're going to look at these, then keep these issues in mind. And um, uh, so pass and, everyone's comments. Yeah, why not? Or just you know, I mean, or somebody maybe they can be consolidated because there's some redundancy. But <coughs> if the board of health themselves hasn't yet taken it up. Then it seems to me it's a an idea that some folks had put forward, but for them to be Board of Health regulations, the Board of Health is going to have to review them. So uh, maybe Greg knows if the Board of Health has yet, if, but it doesn't seem like we need to spend a lot of time on it if the Board of Health isn't, not, isn't actually reviewing them. Greg, do you have any insight on the, um, these Board of Health proposed regulations? No, oh, it, it's probably premature to call them Board of Health regulations, okay. but the Board of Health has, um, has as a board ask for comments on these oh, they have a draft water regulations. They have not? They have. they have asked for comments on them. 
as a board. All right, it wasn't in their minutes, at least when I looked, so. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're correct that they were presented to the board from, um, from a private group. Um, the board has voted to, to look into them and, just, and they're seeking comments from other boards. So the question is, do we want to take Sarah's advice and distill uh, and um, send them in as raw or distill them down into a um, more uh, consolidated document? Perhaps we could discuss some of the common themes first and before mm -hmm. we make a decision. Okay. And I thought Becky would want to say something before hand uh, Becky, you had your hand up? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Ms. Jinx. Hi, Ron. Sorry. Um, yeah, I had a question, but um, <coughs> I'll pass now. Sorry. Okay. <coughs> All right. So um, I guess we'll start with my comments. Did you so, all have copies? Uh -huh. Yeah. I, I, I think they all have to be read since... Um, these weren't posted. So I think if you do, do kind of like behind the scenes comments, so it all the, so these were sent to us. So now everybody knows everybody's opinion, but the public doesn't know. So if we're going to discuss them, I think they have to be read. Mary, I think you misunderstand a lot of things about public meeting laws. Oh, thanks, Chris. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> why can't we discuss them? I think we can eat. We can discuss them, but I think they have to be read so the public knows what we're talking about. We're talking about our comments that we have about some proposed Board of Health regulations. Yes, but we've been through this before where you're not supposed to be sending emails back and forth. I never sent an email to anybody. They went to a neutral person. That's why we all, we sent them all to Gail. And we've done this in the past, and we've been told that that's perfectly fine by legal counsel. So are, are we doing something wrong? Uh, well, okay, the, wrong? I believe we are, but then I will, yes, go ahead then. Go ahead. Tell me. What's wrong? Uh, my understanding of the open meeting law is that we, if, if we do that, we are to post it so the public knows what was said in the emails or in the documents? Well, we're going to go through these now, and then just then they'll know what is said. But right now, we're just taking everybody's. That's know. all I said, Ron. Is that if, if we're going to discuss them, it has to be read so people know what we're so discussing. So, are you suggesting that these all be in the agenda? An agenda item would be all this. No. Well, then, what are you suggesting? I'm just saying what is on the Attorney General's website. That's all I'm saying. If you want to art. Uh, Greg, do you have a comment on this? Sure, I can perhaps provide some clarification. So, um, if you were not to review each comment tonight orally, then you should have posted them as a part of the agenda package. For the public to see. However, the alternative is that you can go over them orally tonight as part of your public meeting. So if you're taking one, you know, each in, each of you can share your comments orally this evening. So I have a question. Does the public have access to the SharePoint documents? No. no. So what some planning boards do, and maybe some that you've worked on, is like our select board posts their meeting packet before the meeting. Right. Um, and other towns do that for the planning board. Right. We currently don't do that. Okay. Have you well, seen that? I that? suggested that, uh, why don't we just pass this over? Because it's just going to take an hour to go through each one of these things. I would say, can we ask Betsy to spend one hour to consolidate these things in a couple of groups? They're quite redundant. Take out, there's a couple of uh, emotional pieces in here. That, um, 
on Gary's, I would say. But I think that they are um, some very good suggestions and detailed review of them by Laura, some high-level apartments. I think they could be consolidated and then given back to us and um, as, a, as an input. But I think, and, or give them to the Board of Health in their raw form if we don't think it's a high priority, which is what I think. It's not a high priority right now. So I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on it's just so either give them to Betsy and have her sort of distill them. them. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I, just if that's or what if the board wants. Your time is limited. But just right. pass them forward as is. Yeah, I mean, it seems to really me that these are. Except that the only thing is that they're passed. They're passed. Well, I, if you're only here a few hours, yeah. do we really want to use that time, or do we want to spend it on more like the 40A? I mean, right. I don't right. see any issue passing these as is. I I would say um, I think it would be more useful to the Board of Health to consolidate these and scrub out some of the redundancy and um, the editorializing and put them in because I think then the themes will be they, they emerge emerging and then we can talk briefly about them and then send them on to the Board of Health and the Select mm -hmm. Board and whoever else wants to see them. Yeah. And then we can have air So I can do that for the next meeting. That would be great. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along. That didn't take that long. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, so special town meeting next steps. Um, <clears throat> I was encouraged by the successful support we received for the passage of all warrant articles we presented at special town meeting. I understand the need to present zoning changes more clearly with as much explanation as we can. You know, zoning laws are complex, especially the ones we were trying to um, do. So we must do a better job, I think, in the future explaining but what, both what the proposed change would do and why we're proposing it. Maybe a simple guide to each specific law being proposed as a separate document to the law itself will simplify things. So the next town meeting window is in April. There'll be a lot of articles on the warrant, budget, uh, two and a half override, as well as um, several other items citizens bring up. My suggestion going forward is to pick two or three of the remaining recodification articles to place on the warrant. And I'll throw that up to the board as to thought their thoughts, your thoughts on moving forward with the remaining articles that we are proposing. Any comments? Laura has her hand up. Christina? We, yeah, no, Laura, Laura, please. Yeah, if we take that approach, which I think has some merit given um, there's a um, fair bit of discussion probably to be had around these. Uh, my my vote, I'll call it that, would be for the cluster zoning. I'd really like to take that one forward. Given that we have cluster zoning now, the intent for those of us who think it's worthwhile to change it and revise it is to make cluster zoning easier to do and to accomplish those environmental benefits. Um, it doesn't change density. It's the one uh, proposed regulation that actually has capital A affordable housing in it. Um, so I think it has a lot of potential strengths. And if we could make it clearer, I think some of the the um, some of the hesitation perhaps about it is whether it allows you to do something that subdividing land would not allow you to do. So it might be that we could make that clearer um, and give people more information to make a decision about that in, in a more informed way. But I think there's a lot of merit in the cluster zoning, uh, particularly where it does advance the possibility of affordable housing. But just to take a step back, what do you yeah. think of the idea of just having two or three articles? I, I would as support opposed, that. As opposed to going through all the Ukraine? Yeah. Any other, Mary? I, um, since we started out doing this as a recodification, we still have items that we have never recodified. My 
favorite, the um, floodplain, has still not been updated mm -hmm. since 2020. We had an issue with the inclusionary housing bylaw, which we thought we were removing. We did not. Um, I think there's a list of five or six other things that are truly recodification. I would like to see those handled first before um, presenting new or greatly revised bylaws. And in my opinion, two or three is too many. I think one at a time. So <laughs> I will say this, that the, the, the articles that are left to, for us to do are much easier to explain than what we went through at the town meeting. And we'll be presenting a packet this size instead of that size. And I think we could explain each of those articles much better. And I think we should take this opportunity probably to revisit them and make them better if we can. We're not all going to agree on them, but I think there's always room for improvement. I think in going through the process, I learned quite a bit uh, about what we should be presenting, and I think it could be beneficial. I would add to the cluster, I would like to see senior housing because the, demand, the need for senior housing in this town, given the data, is overwhelming. And I think we should, that's what, the, that's what we should be doing. Yeah. <coughs> um, I kind of agree with both uh, Mary, uh, Chris, and Laura. I would suggest that we take up the administrative changes, section 12, just getting that tidied up, <coughs> adult entertainment, because that's a risk to us, delete the inclusionary zoning. Um, I think flood plane probably would pass because um, it's a good thing. And um, if, if somebody can propose a draft, I think that would be great. Um, and I think we can, uh, you identified a number of what's called Scribner's, Scribner fixes. Like let's, you know, do a renumbering and a, you know, typo fix uh, of the, everything that we have. Um, I think people have shown that they trust us to renumber things and to fix those errors. And then uh, maybe have a workshop where we uh, decide whether it's the, I, I would say senior housing in my ha uh, book, senior housing or the cluster. Um, I would actually suggest on the senior housing, if we have time, given the 3A, that we might want to put together a small working group or a small session where we actually sort of draw out where what it would look like, kind of spin out what what in each district could happen there what, and how you would review a special permit, sort of a, a thought exercise on senior housing, because I think people would be less scared of it if we could sort of see, you know, take 10 lots in town and in the various districts and kind of try, test fit them somehow. Um, and then on, uh, I don't think we should do non-conforming use in the spring, but I think uh, there's a work, if we got a working group with the ZBA and the building inspector and us, I, I think the existing bylaw and case law pretty much already put put it to bed. So I could be wrong on that, but um, to me it's not a high priority. So so I would say the administrative changes, but I disagree with you, Mary, I think we can get a couple done. Adult Administrative changes, adult entertainment, delete the the inclusionary zoning and do some of the Scribner um, articles and then take up one that I would consider to be uh, planful, whether it's senior housing or cluster. Can I ask a yeah. question on that? Yeah. So well, with inclusionary zoning, I thought from a couple of years ago, the discussion was if that bylaw is removed, we're replacing it with something. So we, the only affordable housing we are generating is if somebody builds more than six units in a residential conservation cluster that... Well, actually, affordable housing, you can take a lot anywhere and put affordable housing on. So we don't preclude affordable no, housing. No, no, no. Like there's place no requirement. We have an incentive. So developers will keep a threshold of six. So, right. so we are not incentivizing any which way within our bylaws for affordable housing. But this is my point. We could argue... Uh, whether zoning is the right vehicle for that, and and but I and I agree with you that that the bylaws we've put forward are not 
a solution to our big A affordable housing, even we have the, the cluster, a perfect cluster bylaw. Well, zoning <laughs> yeah. is one tool. Zoning, zoning is only one tool. Um, solve it all that way. But uh, zoning doesn't preclude anybody from putting from building affordable housing, so it's important that we recognize yeah. that. Yeah. But anyway, um, I think we have a little bit of time, um, and I'm happy to to your earlier point to come up with maybe with Betsy uh, with a work plan of on these dates. We'll take we'll make these decisions. We'll do a workshop on this. When do we have to have the town? When do we have to have a, a public hearing for, and then <coughs> kind of work through it. Um, so, as a work plan. So what I'm hearing, we went from two or three to about five mm -hmm. now. So oh, uh, I, I think don't they're know easy. if that's, you know, we have enough time uh, at that meeting. Uh, once maybe it's two days and if the public wants to listen to us for that. And, but um, so. I'm hearing admin, adult, entertainment, cluster, senior housing, and maybe a floodplain. Uh, uh, I, I'm not agreeing with Sarah. I just, I said the floodplain yeah. and then administrative. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Yes. Um, when was the last time um, FEMA revised the maps? Recently. I think we got something recent. Yeah, I think a couple and of did they also give you a draft bylaw to adopt? No. No? Talk to Sue. I don't okay. know. Uh, there has not been in my year and a half on the board. I have not heard, seen a draft FEMA floodplain bylaw. Is that something else you think we should well, be refreshing? Well, when I was working in, I haven't fully looked at your floodplain bylaw, but when I was working in Winchester, um, there was a requirement from FEMA that we that the town adopt um, a revised floodplain bylaw and floodplain maps, which they provided. So um, anyhow, we ended up getting revised maps. We ended up getting a slightly revised bylaw from what the town's bylaw was. And so um, I can check with FEMA on that because um, they have pretty standard language that can then be tailored for the year. Um, but I was just curious when the maps were updated. Um, also, when was the last time anybody put in a cluster bylaw in this town? A, a cluster um, development? Or village was in. Uh, oh, when they build? Or the bylaw? bylaw? No, when, when, okay, when did the bylaw go in? Uh, I don't know, it should be in your, I don't have money. Yeah. 1984, I think. Okay, and when was the last time anybody used it? Five years ago. Five years ago. And what was the development? It was Surf Village. It was how many? Twelve Pardon? Condos. Where? Um, oh, Surf Village. Oh. Yeah. Surf Village. Oh, yeah. yeah. Surf Surf Village. So I'm, I'm familiar with that. Manchester line. <clears throat> okay. What do you but, have, Betsy? Uh, Betsy? Betsy? And those are some selling for over a million apiece. Yeah. There was some donation to the Affordable Trust. There was. Uh, Becky, you have your hand up. Uh, Ron, yes, thank you. Sorry. Um, we did have a new FEMA map, which was approved at a town meeting um, and I, a number of years ago. Regarding the conservation cluster um, planning board, where I was on it before we did um, the, the Summer Hill as well as um, Sawmill. So, that's, do you want to go for those dates? Thank you. Did you have additional questions? Um, so there's no provision for a special permit for senior housing right now no. in the bylaw. No. And you've got 35% of your, over 35% of your population in that category. Yes. That I'm sure would love to downsize. Yes. Um, some and they're all moving out of town. Pardon? And they're moving out of town. No. So, my comments on town meeting, I was really concerned about the curb cuts. I don't believe it was overwhelmingly. I think it was two votes, and I think the question was worded very poorly, and I think people are, that I spoke to are concerned about that vote. Um, so, if nothing else, we need to get those regulations in place um, ASAP. So, um, I think Mary 
over two years ago maybe has some good ones. So maybe we can recirculate that and mark that up for the next <coughs> meeting and get that on the books. Um, as far as the cluster, I mean, the concern is that we never took that cluster housing and took it, and because we eliminated the size, took that to where density is already dense. District B and District D, what does that look like? And I think we need to go through that similar exercise like senior housing, um, and I think doing both of those is too much for the next town meeting. I think we need to pick one. Um, and I think there isn't really any affordable if there's under six units. So to say that there is, the developer is going to cut every corner and make every lot line and to not put in the affordable housing. We've seen that happen. We saw it Sir Village, the last one. So um, I think there needs to be more of a stick for affordable housing, not... I mean, we voted not to. I think it was two units. We need one. Maybe that's not the number, but developers are going to avoid making affordable housing at all costs. So I think we need to figure out. I mean, we've seen it. So I don't. Um, so what I was going to say before about the conservation cluster housing, I think it fares nicely with senior housing because senior housing is the type of development that you might also choose to cluster if the regulations mm -hmm. allow you to do that and to fit um, senior housing um, types into smaller footprints, preserving more land, possibly even with less parking if some seniors, if it's walkable and some fewer seniors have cars, um, at least once you get to a certain age. So I think pairing the two might make some sense and we could potentially do some test fits. I think we've argued this uh, innumerable times amongst ourselves, so we have uh, you know reasons for having concerns about it or believing that it's a good thing. Um, again, I think we are incentivizing affordable housing. We don't just get there by having a stick approach, but we also have some carrots and it has to pencil out for the developer as well. And we achieve other things through conservation cluster housing in addition to the potential for affordable housing. I don't think we're gonna get there in affordable housing just by offering residential conservation cluster zoning, but it is the only zoning where we explicitly say then you can do this, mm -hmm. um, and there's a benefit to doing that, a bonus to do that. So that would be my um, suggestion. And then another procedural suggestion is, let's take the stuff that we maybe can agree is gonna be less controversial, is more administrative, fixing these's and that's, and put those in a warrant, mm -hmm. and then have the ones where we feel like we have to have maybe more education, discussion, forms about and have those separate so that we're not trying to blend the two. We make it as clear as possible for people to say, this is the administrative stuff. It may be bundling a number of regulations, but we're going to get this done here. And now we're going to talk to you about cluster zoning, senior housing, whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah, I think we could have one warrant article that does a whole bunch of Yeah, I agree. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. Um, I was just going to make the point that I've, I've heard, from, I've, I've wanted to make for a long time, and that is, um, when I first joined the planning board 20 years ago, um, the chair told me, don't worry, there'll never be a subdivision in Manchester. <laughs> and like within, you know, a few weeks, there was a two lot subdivision. And at least in my year and a half back on the board, um, I have not seen a subdivision. But with uh, the value of land and so forth, um, I think um, we should be cognizant of the fact that um, People can come in with a subdivision plan and uh, and use their backland potentially with a, a road. And then and therefore the notion that a cluster opens up land that is not currently open is, in my opinion, a uh, flawed rationale. Because having been on a planning board in Newbury where long skinny lots with frontage for one house were made into five lots because the, the lots there are these long, <laughs> mile long into the <laughs> marsh. So I think we're, um, because we're not familiar with these small subdivisions, um, it, we don't anticipate that they could be, that they could happen. Um, and uh, I guess I'm just sort of a caution to us to recognize that a subdivision is a little used tool currently but it does exist and it can, um, and therefore the cluster offers benefits over a sprawling subdivision, which is 
almost like the worst uh, use of land because of all the pavement and sidewalks and all the things that our subdivision rules require. Totally anti cow, cow, cow character kind of thing. So um, I guess I could bring you in one of, one of the ones on Newbury that was quite you'd be astounded if they could. We, yeah, I I'm sure that. Oh. Question on that: Were you on the Newbury Planning Board when they voted to approve these pork chop lots that were very prevalent on High Road? Yes. Yeah, because there were a number of people that. So in that case, they followed every single rule in the subdivision bylaw. Right. And then, um, then after the appeal period, they they removed some of those things. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They, there was nothing we could do about it. Because that's changed the whole <clears throat> landscape yeah. on that corridor. Maybe we should revisit the subdivision control law. Yeah. Well, we've got that to do, too. <laughs> we have a lot We have a lot left we have to do. We have a lot of things to do. But, you know, land so clearing. maybe we could make a work plan, <laughs> too. To My suggestion would be that we make a work plan, take all of these, you know, ideas and say, okay, on this date, we're going to spend one hour and we're going to try to get through it. Where are the things we can... Do the Scribners and the re, and the, you know, the, the little stuff, bundle all those things together in one article that is sort of non controversial. And then maybe also, I think in the spring, it kind of depends what else is on the warrant. There's the standard um, mechanisms, but uh, standard um, uh, agenda items. But every year there are other things on the warrant as well. So we could, you know, continue to improve them. Yeah. And maybe we want to pick the few that we yeah. think are worth working on, knowing that this is 2023, 2024, mm -hmm. 2025. If we're going at mm -hmm. ones, twos, and threes, or even up to five at a time, it's going to take us a while yeah. to get wherever we all think we need to get. And so we may be working on some, and some are just going to end up sliding to the next meeting, depending on how the warm shapes up. We could always pass over. We yeah. Could shoot. <laughs> we could yeah, we can. I also agree with that. Christina. I th I'd love to see Mary if you have. Uh, you I gave um, Betsy a hard copy of something I found on the web about driveway regulations. But if anybody wants, you know. Well, my, the driveway curb cut one or the curb cut is out in SharePoint. Um, well, it would be great them. to put that on the agenda for a future meeting. Get them. Let's, yeah. let's finalize them. It won't be in this. It'll be next year. Yeah, but. Not December's one. Yeah, three well, public hearings. We have to wait till the Attorney General approves them. Yeah, but I think we can be ready with regulations. I think that'd be great. Um, so we're on, I think, okay, so I think, go ahead. Just, I think sometimes we think we have to decide everything right then and there. Or, I mean, it could be a five minute conversation on the 12th. Like, we found them, we looked at them, we think they're good, and then we're going to really go into them and give feedback at that meeting so we can change. I mean, we can only, we can say we're going to spend 10 minutes on. A first glance, a first read, first right? Read. I mean, I don't That's think we, idea. I mean, if someone comes and applies for a curb cut tomorrow, there's nothing on the book. So I think just saying it's going to be next year is a little. Well, well next year is January. It's a month and a half away. So I think we could start to. Well, we have, yeah, but I'm just trying to think about your time, everyone's time. If we have three public hearings now on. Well, hopefully by that point, we're not going to have to spend too much time on that. I hope not, well, we I'm do. saying that maybe we can have some comments ready to move it along at the next meeting, is my point. Right now, we have nothing on the books. Trying to be big hole. everyone's time. That's all. Trying um, to figure what will fit The new well. general bylaws actually have quite a few specific things that would be good to make an application that is clear for the building inspector and the DPW. If the, there are actually more requirements in the new general bylaws than in the current zoning, in my opinion. So let's write them down on the application. They have to meet these things, and if you don't, it goes to the planning board, at the very least. There are templates that we could build yeah. on for this kind of thing. You know, we, we, we did it about two years ago. Yes. Okay. So back on topic on this um, <laughs> special, on the next town meeting, um, I think we'll, we'll just continue this discussion on what we want to do, what, how many uh, articles we want to bring in next meeting. Yeah. Or a work plan of the things we're going to put them on. I like that idea over the next three years. Yeah. Say, look, or the, this next, is going to be spring meeting. This will be fall meeting. I was actually thinking to get, get to the finish line of springtown meeting, but then we can put things on a work plan for future 
Well, I'm I think happy. my point was that some of them are going to, we may work on them. Right, and they're going to slide. And they're going to slide because of the way the board yeah. shapes up. But, you know, adult entertainment, I'm just going to pick on that one. Maybe we felt like we've had enough discussion about that. It's yeah, fairly just, clear. Yeah. We just put it on the list for spring. Yeah, exactly. We don't need to spend more time discussing it if we agree that we don't need to. And then we just slide it if we have to slide it. Mm -hmm. It's very curious how communities deal with adult entertainment. Um, when I worked in Winchester, their adult entertainment zone was right smack downtown. Mm -hmm. All and, eyes on the street. <laughs> and um, there was no adult entertainment facility there. They viewed that, you know, it was within sight of everybody uh -huh. and nobody wanted to go forth and propose anything um, versus other communities <laughs> take the approach of, you know, kind of out of sight, out of mm -hmm. mind, so they put it in an industrial zone. Mm -hmm. um, but you might be more likely to get it there than a... Yeah, exactly. Um, and I thought the, the Winchester approach was somewhat interesting. And in just nobody would have the yeah. nerve to put yeah. it, you know, right smack downtown, right beside the bookstore. So, Betsy, now that you say that, actually, we went through a small exercise when we were talking about the marijuana facilities and with self-signaling now purchasing, you know, one of the few pieces of land that are over there. I mean, there actually has to be a piece of land where a marijuana shop or an adult entertainment shop could be developed. Um, now, yes. it's, I don't it think just it's... is occupied by a, an owner that may, may build a lab. It doesn't mean that just because it's not... Um, it's the same exact thing as if you are on a, um, in District D, on a lot that is allowed to family. You're not required to build two so families. So the build one town council had a little yeah. bit of a difference. So if we approve that special permit for cell signaling, I think we need to actually revisit that. Um, it was a little bit of a concern, and they wanted to go through the exercise and look at the map and make sure we had a lot that we could do. So I'm curious about your comment about marijuana because I did all the research for the town of Dracut in terms of marijuana and the town voted um, to approve allowing marijuana so it became a general bylaw and it became a zoning bylaw and in that particular situation the town decided to put <coughs> marijuana facilities in commercial industrial zones. So it's tied to um, the number of liquor licenses within a community. So A, the board voted at a town meeting to allow marijuana. They then voted the bylaws, both zoning and general. Um, and then um, As did it's they. limited to... So in Dracut's case, Dracut has three... Uh, 32,000 people, I forget how many liquor stores, but it equaled um, four um, retail facilities. And um, there were, there was one lab, there's only been four labs allowed in the state, and Drake had got one of them. And then um, I think partially because it's a reasonably central location, um, and, but I haven't heard anything about a legal requirement to allow marijuana I don't know, That wasn't my, there actually has to be a piece of land that this could be developed on. So now we have two things. I, I still don't understand that comment. So my concern is if cell signaling permit goes through, that is pretty much the last piece of land that could have been potentially an adult entertainment or... A marijuana facility. So if it's not going to be able to be developed in the LCD, then the right is to go into any other district. If it's not feasible to be developed in the LCD, then they can look elsewhere. Well, there's plenty of LTD, oh, LTD, LCD. There are other parcels. There are other parcels. There are other parcels. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm just saying we need to put that in the back of our mind if this permit goes through. I, I'm concerned that they're, it's not just one. I think there's a better, there's a legal discussion around what, it just can't be like one pinhole in the whole LCD. Right. So in terms of, in terms of the adult use, 
um, you're correct in that it can't just be one lot that is um, allowed to have. But you also don't set aside a specific lot for a use, right? At least that would be. Not zoning. You don't set aside a particular specific lot no. for a use. All right. See, I tried the strategy of putting, allowing it in two or three lots in downtown, because you're never going to get it. I'm guessing that won't fly at town. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let somebody else speak to that one. Yeah. There you have a parting right. comment. I have a parting comment. Um, so. We're talking about discussing what bylaws or all the bylaws what to bring forward. I don't want to miss the fact that, and perhaps I'm the only one, but I got the sense at town meeting and after that um, residents were concerned with understanding the bylaws being proposed, but they were also concerned with the bylaws. And so I don't want the planning board to make a broad assumption that we just continue on and push these if it's not what residents want. I perhaps it's it's a survey that's put out something, um, but I did not get the feedback that residents are gung ho about these changes. So I think and everybody has their own opinion. I'm just saying I don't want the planning board to make the exact same mistake we made doing it in a in a with tunnel vision on and proceeding when maybe that's, maybe for all of them that doesn't make sense. I need to explain why we're doing it. Uh, that is true, but I, uh, you know, we all talk to our own silos. You talk to your silo and they all say, well, that was terrible. And I talk to my silo mm -hmm. and say, wow, you know, we got every one of those things passed by a two-thirds vote with 550 people there. So, I'm trying to cross over, and I'm trying to say uh -huh. that I it I think it merits the planning board discussing if it does make sense and doing an out, outreach. My uh, uh, opinion. You know, I think we should do. Of course, we have to do outreach. Of course. I think we cannot. And the only place we can determine whether two thirds of the people are going to pass zoning by uh, a zoning bylaw is at town meeting. I agree. I, I, that's you know that's the place it gets passed, and I think. <clears throat> We were, I don't think we failed at all. I mean, my voice failed, but that's my opinion. So, you know, we have well, different opinions. Yeah, but I, but, um, I don't want words put in my mouth. I did no. not say we failed. No, I, 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 I you're, we're going down a path saying, oh, it, they were passed over because people wanted more information. I'm just adding another dimension to that. I know. I think we can be more strategic. I agree on that. I think we need to be. But, um, can we I, were hit. We were hampered by a whole bunch of things. Certainly, uh, technology was technology. not a friend. Can so, I add one other thing, which is not quite on topic, but a little bit? Uh, I think it was about a year and a half ago. Christina, Mary, and I were working on procedures and uh, policy and procedures. So I've been kind of I found it on my computer, and I've been kind of massaging it a little bit. And I'd like to put it up on SharePoint and have people comment on it, if unless somebody objects. I think we're going to get wrapped into that open meeting law violation again, but yes, we need to do it. I would like to see us, I think it's related to the next topic on the agenda, which is Yeah, so that's, that's a good segue. So, um, <laughs> so I put on the agenda this planning board retreat we were having, and now I have a new wrinkle, or there's a new wrinkle. Um, but one of the items I said, should we be discussing policies and procedures at this retreat? And then my other thought is, should we now postpone this and await for our new member? So there's two trains of thought here. Um, so I, I was just going to throw those two items out for discussion. Um, and, the, 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 and then I don't know, uh, maybe is Greg still on? I won't see him. Oh, yeah. He's there. On um, the election, I didn't see anything in the bylaw about um, you know, when a when a member resigns, do we, do they have to be replaced, or can they wait for the next cycle of election? I mean, is it worth replacing? Do we have to replace someone immediately, or um, so? Just thoughts on that. I don't know, Greg, if you have any insight on that, or if we should be, you know, looking for candidates. So it's a bit of a judgment call whether or not you proceed with appointing uh, basically an interim candidate. 
until the next election. And that, that appointment is a, is a joint vote of, of the planning board and the select board. Um, so we're, we're what, five months out yeah. from election. It was a half a year. So, you know, I think there's a strong argument to proceed and make an appointment. That's the way I came in. That's the timing that I came in on was someone was stepping down yeah. and I finished out that person's term. And it was something, like something less than a year. Okay. All right, so here's Christmas. Um, all right, so on a retreat, uh, thoughts on that? So waiting or going ahead and... I think we should go ahead. I think we should go ahead. I, I agree. I think we put it off for two years, <laughs> two and a half, three. I don't know. Okay, so then um, that sounds like people want to do that. And uh, so a date and a venue um, and topics that I think kind of brief policy and procedures would be high on the agenda. Um, a date, we're talking sometime in January, um, February. So can I, is policies and procedures a, a <coughs> retreat topic, or is that... Well, we, uh, we kind of discuss, you know, <coughs> our thoughts on how, how meetings are going, and how we're, uh, how we can be better. It seems to me um, policies and procedures are a nice <coughs> topic to take as a retreat, because it's not, um, it, it's hard to find time to do that, and we've just come through a very big challenging project and I would argue we have a couple ahead of us um, and so you know how can we work better and so I, I would say policies and procedures as the subject for um, a retreat and maybe we I don't know, do it some place where we have some dinner or something um, I mean it's hard to find time but does it have to be public yes mm -hmm. but I don't think we have to zoom Okay. Any thoughts on a, on a, a time frame, uh, January? We just pick a date. And January. Do you think we can do it in lieu of one of our meetings? Yeah, that would be the easiest, just to do it on the same night, on a Monday night. When yeah. We're having one of our meetings. If we can look at the agenda. January 9th and 23rd and February 13th. Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't be here the night. About the twenty third of January, right? Okay. Yeah. Does that sound good? Tentatively, twenty third of January. I'm hoping I will be mobile. <laughs> no, because I know you're having that operation. Well, I haven't, I haven't mentioned this to a couple of people, but I'm having ankle surgery. Mm -hmm. I'm um, very sorry. Yes. Yeah, you're not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> I had it oh. five years ago. Uh, so tentatively the 23rd. 23rd, okay. it's clear. Good. And maybe right after a meeting or right before. Well, there won't be much on the agenda. It would be great if we could cancel the meeting for other purposes and give ourselves a chunk of time when we're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, going right after one of these meetings, we're starting no. at 9. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm thinking in lieu of the. Yeah, in lieu of the meeting would be terrific if we could. Okay, maybe we'll just have some minor, if there's some small stuff. Okay. Um, so, but it would have to be in public session. Yeah. 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 So you'd be here. It doesn't have to be here. It could yeah, be or wherever. Chapel. Right. It doesn't have to be Zoom, right? Right. No. It could but be it, at um, the. Uh, does it not have to be Zoom? No, I don't think so. Zoom is a courtesy. But if, if the reason it, it's been an issue is because it's been posted as Zoom. So if you just on the agenda say there is not a Zoom, it's a public meeting, but there's not a Zoom option. I think we just need to be consistent going forward. We just can't have yeah. one meeting. We not can say this is a retreat if we make the agenda. Yeah. You know, just in the public, the board of selectmen did theirs via Zoom. Um, their I, mm -hmm. so I think that's hard, personally. I just think not having Zoom and then all of a sudden not, not having it for one, I just don't think it's a great look. I mean, I think we just need to, so. I don't know, I think generally a retreat is where you kind of come together as a group and you don't take public comment. The public, by definition, has to be able to attend if, and if they want to. But then 
you know, it's a it's a working session among us to try to get through things as a and build team, you know, build for it. So that's that's my opinion. I, I completely agree. I just feel like it's not a great look to go zoom, 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 no zoom, zoom again. I just, for consistency. Well, would it and, feel better if it was on an off Monday? But I, I think a retreat is, like, we a retreat we did the one time. Transport. Yeah, yeah. way before COVID. Yeah, but yeah. was it, it even posted? Of yes, course it was. It has to be posted. I think we did post it. It was posted. Why don't you advertise it in advance and say <laughs> this is going to be? Well, you have a picture of it. Yeah. Not going to be no. on the <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Um, minutes 10, 17, 11, 14. I move the minutes of 10, 17, and 11, but 14 be approved. Uh, I just have a couple typos. Yeah, I, I have can a skip by them. <laughs> Okay, speaking wow. of that, then, I think I missed a little bit of news in the morning. But so Gary was supposed to be signing the minutes. Mary said she no longer wanted to do it. So I think I may have to nominate you to be the secretary. What? What? The clerk. <laughs> what are we the planning board no one's clerk. been signing the minutes, right? So who's the planning board clerk? Gary Gilbert. Gary Gilbert. No, I didn't know that. Good wow. Nobody needs to sign the minutes. Thank when you. you approve them, they're approved and posted to the town website. Thank you. I don't know if that's true. How, um, I beg your pardon? What would Helene say? Well, can I ask her? <laughs> Helene her signed by the okay, board. let's go with the typos first. Uh, who's going to go first? Can we just... Mine is not a typo. It's a correction. Okay. 1017 on the first, I don't have it in front of me, but on the first vote, which was on um, Street about um, not the store water piece, but the part before it, I abstained on that vote. It says six unanimous, I abstained on that vote. Okay, change the vote to abstain for Miss Tenney. Got that, uh, Gail? Yes, thank you. Okay, and then Miss Foley. Are they Just a quick? few on page three um, in the center where one, numbers one, two, three talks about swimming pools. Number one, just it just doesn't make sense, I, the sentence, so maybe if that could get reworded. And then in number three, it says in two places, non-confirming rather than non-conforming. That's it. Okay, motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, raise hands. So I was not present for the second meeting minutes. Should I abstain? Abstain. Yeah. Abstain. Okay. Laura's got abstain. Okay. Going on the more yeah. about the other. All right. Thank you. Just on other matters, uh, just for the board's information, <clears throat> if you don't know the um, our Bella Street curb cut, which was appealed to the ZBA, was approved. So. Um, Citing there was no safety concern by the police chief, so they voted to approve it. Anybody have anything else to bring up? Other than uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yeah. See you in December. And we're not going to meet on December 26th.